Bruce Bay. The saga of the great Hudson's Bay Fur Company. And of the brave men who traveled the untrekked wilderness from Labrador to California, from Minnesota to Alaska. Starring Barry Nelson as Jonathan Banner, Hudson's Bay Man. With George Tobias as Pierre Falcone. spring of 1817, the governor of the Hudson's Bay Fur Company sent Pierre Falcone and me to Fort Gannon. My assignment with the company was to handle trouble any place it started, any time. It was a big job because it was a big land. The Indian tribes were traveling to Fort Gannon to trade their winter fur catch. traders. You're the first white faces I've seen in six months. Oh, we're real glad to meet you, aren't we, boys? Yes, sir. We've heard a lot about you. Preacher Henry, the man who's preaching fire and brimstone for the fur traders. Well, that's my mission, but just who are you? Whiskey traders. All right, Ben. Kid, let's bust them up. Stop the whiskey traders. What'd you expect them to see? Come see, come saw. He makes this sound very easy. Yeah. I tell you what we do. We start right in. First thing tomorrow. We start right now. If a man does tomorrow's job today, then what job will he have for tomorrow? Tomorrow I'll probably stop more whiskey traders. down the whiskey traders. I had a hunch we could kill two birds with one stone. How are you feeling? Better. Up to uh, answering a few questions? Depends on the questions. Well, of course, we, we 
you want us to know, we want to know who attacked you. So you may punish... No, 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 no. That's, that's up to the governor and the London courts. It's only my duty to bring them in. Well, I don't want to tell you your duty, John. But I have mine, too. That is to forgive my enemies and bear no witness against them. If they're to be punished. The good Lord will see to it. Would it uh, be wrong for me to give the Lord a little help? I don't think he needs it, Jonathan. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just have to move without your help. How is he? Not bad. He'll be up and around in a day or two. Whiskey traders, huh? Yeah, they figured the preacher was hurting their business, educating the Indians. Now, let's go. semicircle toward the west about 30 miles from Gannon. If whiskey traders were intercepting the tribes headed for Gannon, we'd find them along this route. traders. The seasonal trek of Indians to Gannon had drawn them like flies. Do we have to do this? This hurts me more than it does you. Taste much better. Sometimes things didn't go so easily. The frontier bred violent men. But there was a law. The law of decent men that all had agreed to. And in Hudson's Bay Company territory, it was my job to enforce it. On our second day away from Gannon, the preacher, in spite of the surgeon's disapproval, had insisted on returning to work. The trader had loaned them a buggy, and the carpenter had made him a cross. Joshua Sharp and his companions also planned to go about their business, having purchased three horses from an Indian. They planned to pick up their whiskey kegs where they had hidden them. There's no need to look so frightened. I didn't denounce you. Why not, mister? Because I forgive you. You really believe, don't you, mister? Don't you, son?
Late the following day, Pierre and I came upon a scene of serenity and worship. It was kind of a relief after all the meanness and violence. A small group of Indians camped beside a stream. The preacher was addressing them by hand signals. He was telling them about the Lord, how the Lord was every man's savior. What is it that he says? Now they talk back. Are they making fun of him? That's the Lord's Prayer. sermon. Thank you. I gather you don't speak a Cineboyne. Jonathan, there are so many Indian dialects that I don't know that I want to translate the gospel into sign language. Preacher, you, uh, you know you're in danger continuing your work after what happened. You want me to quit? No. No, just, just give me a chance to help you. Tell me the names of those men who attacked you. Describe them. Jonathan, how can I look at the words in my Bible, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, when I seek vengeance myself. As I told you before, it's the Lord's right to punish them, not mine. Old Holy Joe just can't leave that Assiniboine alone, can he? Well, he can't. Maybe he needs another lesson. You, you ain't gonna kill him, are you, Josh? Ah, you can get your neck stretched for murder. Only a fool takes a chance like that. Maybe when I'm done with Preacher, he'll wish I had killed him. Philistines falling yeah. one another. The shirt! Sir, I warn you to stay out of my business. some Cree Indians came to Fort Gannon bearing a stretcher. On it was the beaten body of the preacher. He was carried to the post surgeon. He was more dead than alive. says the holy man has taught him and his people evils of liquor. Therefore, he'll accept our whiskey in return for that one bale of furs. 
Doggone, you, you can't beat a heathen for logic. Yeah, but we're in no position to argue. It looks like uh, Preacher beat you after all. Cousin, I'm right sorry that I told your daddy that I'd help you out in the fur trading business. <laughs> I just don't think you've got any stomach. Get it. Let's go. Preacher had been unconscious since the priest had brought him in. The surgeon said it was a toss-up whether the preacher lived or died. Somehow I felt responsible. But there was nothing I could do. Absolutely prime. Bet those come from the Assiniboine. I can tell every time. Yes. You're wrong this once. We got them from the Crees. Crees? Then you must have run into that preacher fellow. <clears throat> Somebody tied him to a beam and flogged him. The Crees brought him here. They found out who did it? No. It ain't likely they will. He's been unconscious all the time. And it appears like he'll die. I guess he just went to get the horses out of the rain. Go after him. Now, I figure the men uh, who did this... you don't mind, I just wish you'd get along with the account. Oh, all right. You can't be with anybody else. You boy, attracting all that attention. It don't make no difference. All our luck left us when you tore up that Bible. Don't you understand, Josh? If that preacher dies, we're murderers. <laughs> Shut up! That's enough, mister. I should have figured you, mister. You've got no proof, Banner. No? You don't think he'll talk? Run! 
Shot a piece, and we better make them count. He'll turn out to be a fine lad, Jonathan, you'll see. I'm teaching him how to write. Oh, fine. I parole him in your charge. Preacher, am I getting it right? Almost. Here, let me show you, Brother Jed. Finish the work for yesterday and today for tomorrow? Like 
driving on the river to stop more whiskey traders who might be headed this way. Ah, then we start fresh in the morning. Pierre Mombrov, we start fresh right now.